I'm going to compare the weight of this versus the weight on a scale and see how they how they compare. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Alright, so now we get the rope up here and it seems strong enough. Should be good. And now I gotta stand in the loop. Hi everyone, Mike here from Bikes by Mike with another cycling related video. I'm back in the garage to talk about wheel building. I'll cover the process of how I true wheel in a future video, but for today I want to explain how I measure spoke tension when I'm going about turning a wheel that's already built or building a wheel from scratch. The key to all this is getting your hands on a spoke tension calibration tool or jig like this one that I built for myself. Okay, let's get to it. Now first, let me say that you don't have to be able to measure your exact spoke tension to build a true wheel. You'll find many amateur and even some professional wheel builders that will say that you can judge spoke tension by simply plucking the spoke and listening to the sound it makes. And if you have a musical ear, you can probably go about just tightening and loosening spokes until you get a similar sound from each spoke on the wheel. But while this method may, notice I say may, let you get variance in spoke tension among all the spokes within an acceptable range, what it won't do is tell you what spoke tension they're all at. And this to me is a real limitation of dialing spoke tension this way. You may end up being confident that the variation in spoke tension is minimal, but you'll have no way of knowing for sure whether the spoke tensions are within the rim manufacturer's specifications. Let me give you an example. I just built up a mountain bike wheel set using light bicycle rims. The recommended spoke tension is listed at between 120 and 130 kilograms of force. That's like a really narrow margin. And not only do you need to fall within this 10 kilograms of force range, but ideally you want to land somewhere at the high end of the range, or at least I like to. Every wheel set, regardless of the quality of the build, will lose spoke tension over time. It's just a fact of life with materials like aluminum and metal spokes. They'll fatigue over time. I've yet to test a stock wheel or custom built wheel set that didn't lose tension over the course of two or more years. So what I like to do when I build my custom wheels is to have the spoke tensions come in at the top end of acceptable range. In the case of these light bicycle rims, I aimed for the drive side spokes to max out right at the upper limit of 130 kilograms of force. The reason being that as the spokes lose tension over time, they will stay within this acceptable range longer. So you can see that in working with such tight tolerances, it can be very hard to build wheels just by going by the sound the spokes makes when plucked. Now I know this topic is very controversial within the wheel building community, so I won't spend too much time on this. But what I will say that I don't think can be disputed is that if you're not using a spoke tension meter and a calibration jig in your wheel building process, you have no objective way to prove to someone that the wheel you built is within an acceptable tension standard. If I'm paying someone for a wheel set, especially custom wheels, I want to know for sure that it's a quality build, which to me means seeing the spoke tension readings for each spoke. Okay, let me explain it using a totally different example. I love scotch, single malt scotch whiskey to be exact. The Whiskey Act requires by law certain information to appear on the bottle and packaging for anything claiming to be scotch whiskey. That is whiskey manufactured in Scotland. Basically, there are four things. The category of whiskey, the name of the brand, the size of the bottle and the alcohol by volume. The reason that this is law is that consumers demanded to know and need to know what quality of whiskey they're paying for. It's not good enough for the distiller to simply say, this is really good scotch. I knew what I was doing when I made it, trust me. Nope. And in my opinion, the same applies to wheel building. If there's no objective measure as to how the wheel was built, there's no way of verifying that it's a quality build. Anyway, 
That's my view. That's all I'll say on it. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Before I took on the project of building one of these things, I looked at just buying one off the shelf. The problem is that there are very few companies that actually build spoke tension calibration tools. And where you can find them, they are really expensive. So I decided to build one myself from scratch. The first one I built was a simpler version of this one that didn't have these roller guide things here. Now this is made up of a lot of different parts that I had to buy from different parts suppliers. In many cases I had to buy bulk amounts so I ended up getting more parts than what I needed. So this tool wasn't super cheap to build but it works really well and is really solidly built. And it's still cheaper than buying any pre-built one. You could definitely go about finding creative ways to use cheaper materials to get the same result. I see many people building ones out of wood that works just fine. The only disadvantage is the frame design has to be built a bit more bulky to get something with the same strength as smaller metal frame designs. I'll put a link in my description to the parts I used to build this jig, which includes which specific retailers I sourced them from. As I mentioned before, I ordered more parts than I needed for just a single calibration tool. So make sure you calculate exactly how many items you need for what you're building. You'll notice that a lot of items, such as aluminum bars and their fasteners, come from retailers of 3D printing supplies, which kind of makes sense as a spoke tension calibration tool does have a lot in common with the 3D printing machines. It's just like flatter. So let me now show you how this thing works. So essentially what I have here is a crane scale attached to a spoke or a device that holds a spoke and uh, a part up here where I have a knob here that either tightens or loosens the force on the spoke. So what I can do using this Zeto spoke tension meter or any digital spoke tension meter is I can measure the deflection of the spoke at different kilograms of force. So I use a spreadsheet to track my spoke tensions and what I do is essentially I record that deflection starting at a low amount of say 75 kilograms of force going up to like 130, 140. And as I mentioned before, I build wheels generally within a range of say 100 to 130 kilograms of force. So I create a chart that has a broader range of spoke tensions than what I need, but better to have too much than too little. So I'll start off by turning on the crane scale and it's already zeroed out. I'll do the same for my uh, spoke, uh, my uh, spoke tension meter. And I'll start with the first, uh, first, first uh, recording, which will be at 75 kilograms of force. So I'm just tightening this, applying more and more pressure, more and more tension on the spoke until I get to 75. And it doesn't have to be exactly right on 75, but uh, within half or even one kilogram of force is probably accurate. <clears throat> Accurate enough. So there we go. So 75. I'll then measure the tension. Sorry, you won't be able to see the number. This is a bladed spoke, so I have to put it on the spoke so that it fits along the flat portion. And I'm measuring 1.68. So I'll enter 1.68 into my spreadsheet for, so that's 1.68. I think, it's mil, I think it's 1.68 millimeters of deflection measured by the spoke tension meter, which equates to 70, 75 kilograms of force. Then I go up by 2.5 kilograms of force increments. So now I'll go to 77.5 kilograms of force. Again, trying to get it, doesn't have to be right on 77.5. Let's see if I can back it off a bit. There we go, 77.65, that's probably as close as I'll get it. Then I'll take another spoke tension reading. And now I'm getting 1.74. So I enter 1.74 into my Excel spreadsheet for 77.5 kilograms of force. I'll do one more, I'll do 80. And I would continue to do this until I get to 140 kilograms of force. Bang on, 80. Measure the deflection. 
And now I'm getting 1.76. So I'll enter that into the spreadsheet for 80 kilograms of force. And that's essentially what you do. So you're, you're, you're converting the deflection of force uh, on the spoke to kilograms of force, which is really the figure you need to be able to build wheels to the appropriate tension. So I continue to go down 82.5, 85, all through the different increments of kilograms of force and enter the associated um, deflection reading from my spoke tension meter. Once that's populated, you then have the critical piece, which is your spoke tension chart. And like I say, I've, I've created this, this customized spreadsheet myself. As you can see here, I have like SAPM CX Sprint, SAPM CX Ray, SAPM Race 2.0, the rounded spokes. So I've already created three spoke tension charts and we'll continue to add them as I use different spokes. And that feeds into uh, my spoke tension variance calculator, which I use. And basically what I can do is I can go through here and uh, for different wheel sets, different wheels I'm building, enter, enter the spoke tensions. Um, here's the deflection, here's the recorded tension. And actually it tells me whether or not, uh, based on the deflection I've entered, whether or not I'm within an acceptable variance of tension. And I can actually set that acceptable variance down here. Usually I go for something like 5%. And if I change it to 5%, you can see that this, this is a fake wheel set, but you can see that in this case, it's saying that um, there's one, two, three, four spokes that aren't within a 5% uh, variation uh, of spoke tension. But if I change this to 10%, I'm within limit. So basically I know I'm somewhere between five and 10%, which normally I aim for under 5%. So I would continue to work on this wheel to get it within variance, even within a tighter variance. But 10% is still pretty good. If you buy stock wheels, um, I'd be surprised if they were much better than a 20% variance. So that's pretty much all I have to say about this. That's how I go about using a spoke tension meter and a calibration jig to true and build wheels. I hope some of this has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please pass them along. That's all I got for today, folks. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe as it allows me to produce more content for all of you. See you next time. Happy rolling.